Congressman Mike Johnson is here for a few minutes. Hey, Mr. Mike, how are you this morning? Hey, Robert. Great to hear your voice. So I was watching CBS last night immediately huh? following the State of the Union, <laughs> and they do like this flash poll, and three out of four, according to a CBS poll, where you know the fix is in, according to a CBS poll, 75% of the folks they surveyed said the president hit a home run last night. What did Mike Johnson think about that? I thought it was a home run. I told the president that myself on the way out. And, you know, that same CBS poll said that 8 in 10 Americans who watched felt the president was trying to unite the country. And I think he was, Robert. That's the sense that we got. You know, there are some who frown through anything, All even the, the good news, even the irrefutable facts. But uh, facts are stubborn things. It was a great first year of the Trump administration. I think he highlighted that. And I think the tone was, uh, you know, uh, was a good one. I think the president spoke from the heart. He tried to pull everyone together. There were some themes in there that you simply could not uh, sit through and not applaud if you're an American. Congressman um, um, reminded him that it was your birthday. So the president said something to you last night on the way in, right? Yeah, he did. Uh, he did, everyone's calling and texting and asking, did the president remember it was your birthday? No, no, he did not. Uh, Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, my good buddy, was walking right behind him. He said, hey, Mr. President, it's, Mike, it's Mike's birthday. So he leaned in and told me happy birthday. I, I didn't know it was picked up on audio. About half the planet watched it last yeah. night, so that was an interesting uh, way to turn 46. Mike, <laughs> I you know, I was watching it for the to see if there was going to be a train wreck. I, I'm pleasantly surprised today, but here's where I'm irritated, and you got to help me with this. For him to stand there and say this is the biggest tax cut in the history of the country, you we heard from Dr. Lauren Scott. You can see it everywhere if you research it. The Reagan tax cut was bigger. There have been others that were bigger. I don't like to be have smoke blown you know where. Just this is the biggest tax cut in the last twenty whatever it is. Just don't lie to me. I feel I feel that bums me out. Well, you know, it depends on which economist you talk to, right? Certainly it's the biggest one in 30 years, but it was the largest corporate tax cut in history. I mean, there are parts of it that were just truly historic. But look at the effect that it's had already, Aaron. I mean, it's exceeding our expectations. We knew this would be a turbo boost to the economy, but um, it's really taking off. We have had over 100 record closes of the Dow, the stock market, since President Trump took office. We're cutting all these regulations. I mean, this is having the desired effect in the economy. So I, I think the history is yet to be written, honestly. I, if we get to 5 or 6 percent economic growth, which is certainly possible, some economists are saying so, um, listen, every single American benefits from that. So, you know, he took a victory lap and, and spiked the football a little bit, but I, I, think it was, uh, I think it was appropriate. It took 30 years to get that done, and we finally did. It must have been bizarre being in that room in the House chamber last night when on one side everybody is applauding and standing up and praising the president and for, for an awesome job done in my opinion and then just a few feet away there's nothing but about about 50 or 60 or so just grumpy cats huh <laughs> it, it it was it was awkward i mean i'm i was on the aisle so i i was the first uh, seat on the Republican side, so my friends and Democrat colleagues are sitting right to my left, and it was awkward. I, you know, I stood and applauded over a hundred times. There were, I think there was a hundred fifteen applause lines, and I think some of those folks stood for maybe two or three of them. Um, you know, it, it it shouldn't be that way. I, you know, when when President Obama was was delivering State of the Union addresses, you didn't see Republicans boycotting the speeches and all of that. I mean, you, we have to honor the office. You may not agree with every single thing that's said, but you should stand and applaud. This is a, a an important tradition, a ceremony that dates back to our first president, and it's something that makes us uniquely American. I, I think everyone should have participated. A little different direction. What can you tell us? What do you think? What's going to happen with the FISA memo? You know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Well, look, I, I've been one of the ones uh, trying to push the hashtag release the memo. Finally, the in Intelligence Committee voted to do that. Uh, procedurally, the president has five days uh, to deny the request, but uh, none of us expect that he will. I, I think it could be released to the public maybe as early as this afternoon, probably in the next few days. Uh, the president's indicated he wants to do that, and, and I think he should. I, look, I've said all along that, that if we're going to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, that depends very much on transparency. And, and the contents of the, of the memo are alarming. I think they're very credible, and I think everyone in this country should be able to decide for themselves 
about those facts. This is it's alarming and it's credible. But is there anything else you can tell us about it, or is it so incredibly top secret that you just you just can say I saw it and not anything else? That that's that's literally all we can say because we we filed non disclosure uh, agreements. Uh, we have to because it is at least as of right now still classified top secret. So, um, I mean, you know, there 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 could be criminal ramifications for uh, revealing any of the contents. But, uh, you know, w- without getting into that, I can just say th- the same that everyone else has said. It's It certainly is going to be big, big news. I think everyone deserves to see it. And, and I think um, I think the sooner the better. Do you anticipate another investigation, this one, into what I think is the real Russian collusion story, i.e., uh, Hillary Clinton, the Democrats, and, and the Russians. Look, that's no secret, and we've been calling for a second uh, special counsel uh, for months now. I'm, I serve on the House Judiciary Committee, and our, in our jurisdiction is oversight of all of this. We've had multiple hearings over the last year. We brought in all the, the, the heads of all the intelligence agencies and the Attorney General himself, Jeff Sessions. Um, you know, I've asked all these folks in searing questions under oath. Uh, there, there's a lot uh, to be concerned about there. The, it's the integrity of our justice system that really is at stake here. We, we have to be we have to be assured the American people deserve to be assured that that if an investigation like this is going to go forward, that there's not outright bias and um, and, you know, ill practice involved in that. And I, I think that, you know, the evidence is pretty compelling that some of that took place. I don't know that it's Mueller himself, but I do think quite obviously some of the FBI agents and others, FBI lawyers that were involved in all this, um, had an ulterior motive. You can tell by their own material, their own text and emails and all the rest. So, look, I, I think we've got to get to the bottom of that. I think we need to do it sooner than later because, again, I think it's the credibility of our entire intelligence apparatus that's at stake here.